Today is moving day. And one of the reasons I know it's moving day, Vanna's not on the dash. She's back here cuddling with snow. <laughs> but I know it's moving day because we're out of groceries. What are you doing, pumpkin? And it's time to get on the move. We've got a few more things to see in Columbia we're super excited about. First, we got to get some groceries. And then we're on the road. Already coming up on some construction. It could be a long construction day. This is gonna be the no fly Exodo, gonna stock up, probably grab some lunch. It would be an early lunch, maybe a brunch. And then we are southbound, headed towards Ecuador. But don't worry, we're not just driving straight through. We've got a few pretty cool stops still left to do here in Colombia. Show y'all a few more cool things. But first things first, gotta go to the grocery store. Okay guys, we're wanting to try some new fruit, try some new things, and they got all these unusual fruits. This is a lulo. It's kind of got a little bit of a hard skin to it. It's not, it looks like a tomato, but it's actually hard. It's in the fruit section. We're gonna try this and maybe one more. Let's try one of these. Alright. This is pitaya. Pitaya? I think so. Alright, so we got two exotic fruits to try. Alright, I'm ready. Grocery shopping is done. Kurt is taking the groceries to the car and I am going to go try to find us somewhere to get some lunch. It's a little early, so I don't know if anything will be open, but we're going to go see. And then after that, 
The home center, which is like a Home Depot, is in this mall as well. And we're gonna try to find something to build a more permanent step to help me get into the bed. So we've got some errands this morning. Wow, look at that. Awesome for me. Gracias. KS? Carne molida. Carne molida. Okay. Gracias. Alright, Snow, what do you think? That's a big meal for me. Look at that. Now these little chorizos, the key to them, they bring out your little lime. I've never done this before in Colombia, but it actually makes it really tasty. The sausage, chicharrones. Carne molida, which is kind of a dry beef. It's weird. Huevo, a roast, salad, aguacate, and a banano plantain. Banano and plantain. a soup. And, a, and beans. Frioles. We just finished a traditional paisa lunch. And now, if you guys remember, the lagoon table, we are using that right now for Snow's step up into the back of the van. And so I'm gonna go over to Home Center and see if I can't find a piece of wood that'll work. Pretty cool, because they just cut my wood right over here. Como te amas? Marian. Gracias. We have been in the van for a few days now, but we've been in familiar territory, the suburb of Medellin called Rio Negro, and Santa Elena, where we had already camped. But today it is official. Not only are we back in the van, but the exploring starts now. Cutting into some new territory. Brand new turf. We've never been here. We have no idea where we're gonna end up. Well, we have a plan, but we don't know what it's going to look like when we get there. So, let's go guys. We have not had to put fuel in the tank. For a week. Oh, in over three months. Yeah. <laughs> For a really long time. It's the first fill up guys. The van is thirsty. Diesel's about 9,000 pesos a gallon. So just right about $2.25. Getting it filled up. Today, we cross over the Andes. We're on one side of them. By the time this day's over, we're gonna be all the way on the other side. So we're gonna have some very steep, very curvy, but probably very pretty driving to do today. So. The Google says it's a two and a half hour drive, but you guys have probably know that that's not going to be not we'll the see. case <laughs> yeah we'll start keeping an eye on see how off the google was and let y'all know later but we're on a bit of a drive but i hope it's a pretty one we're not the only one making the drive across the andes today we are stuck behind some big trucks back to some mountain driving in colombia right kurt yeah, we just are a little out of Rio Negro, so we haven't even got into the crazy stuff yet, and traffic's already starting to back up. So, could be an interesting first day back on the road.
So, a new part of our journey is on these long drive days. Whether we've got the time or not, we have to stop every hour and a half or two hours and let me walk. Even if it's just for five minutes to get out of the van and move the leg around. I think we found a pretty cool place to stop and take a little short break. Let me show you. We are right next to the road. And if you look over there, there is an amazing waterfall coming down the side of that mountain. It's beautiful. So they do paragliding from here, guys. You can see the paragliders. I don't think y'all will be able to see them on this camera. All right, the short knee break is over. Back on the road. So we just stopped off at the mirror door. We just got going again, 100 yards down the road and traffic has stopped. So not sure if this is construction or roadblock, what the dealio is, but here we go again. <laughs> All right, guys, we have left the hostel. And just last night, as we were getting the van all packed up and knew we were pulling out first thing this morning, we got a safety alert. This is a safety app we have on our phone that's kind of connected to the embassies. We tell it which countries we're in, and it gives us alerts as needed. Now, normally, they're really generic and just kind of vague on telling you to avoid certain areas. But this one came in with specific dates and times. So... We, we asked around at the hostel, talked to the locals, showed them our planned route because starting first thing in the morning, the National Liberation Army, which they call the ELN, it's a group of rebels, armed rebels here in Colombia, they have announced a 72-hour armed nationwide strike. And that starts in the morning, and we are on the road. Now it says it will, it will include road blockades, public transport shutdowns, and forcing shops to close, particularly in areas under the rebel control. Now, we, according to the locals, and looking at our map, for at least the next four or five days, we should not be in areas that are under full control of the rebels. But we are going on some major roads that have been shut down before during these strikes but we have had this happen once in Mexico, right, Kurt? We've had it happen once in Mexico, I actually a couple times, but one serious time in Mexico. Generally, there's not a lot of violence. It's just uh, to disrupt local businesses and local commerce. And so we're kind of hoping it's good. So it's a little bit away, we're hoping that by the time we get down in that particular area that the strike is resolved and everything's back to normal. So in a lot of these countries, we just don't know what we're gonna get or what we're gonna, we're gonna see. But we're following a bunch of other vehicles, so it can't be that bad. Yeah, and guys, you may be wondering why didn't we didn't just wait. Well, we can't wait. Our tourist visa time for Colombia is almost over. We have uh, 10 days of driving to get to the border, and we only have one or two buffer days where we're going to stop and show y'all a couple of things. We literally couldn't wait. So we made the decision. We left the hostel. We're on the road. Fingers crossed we don't run into any of the rebel protests. So we are about 14 minutes from our campsite, according to the Google, which has proven us both wrong so far because we both guessed we would get there around 5 and it's saying we're going to get there at 3.35. The Google made a liar out of us. Well, we've been pretty lucky. I mean, we only had a couple really short construction stops, yeah. like 5 or 10 minutes at most. And to be honest with you, the traffic hasn't been really bad for the most part, so we're making pretty good time. Yeah. So. But one thing's for sure, we are going down in elevation. We are. And it is getting... I, I want to say hot, <laughs> and it has not been hot for us since I, way before.
before the surgery. I think it's safe to say the eternal spring is, is over. over. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect weather of the Medellin area is behind us. But it is what it is. We got to head south and this is the way to do it. We have turned off the paved road. We are on a gravel road headed to our campsite. It says we got four kilometers. And it's supposed to be right on a river. All right, guys. It says there's ant eaters out here. We have yet to spot one. Oh, we are out where the critters are. Wonder if we'll get lucky. All right, we've turned off at what's supposed to be our camping area. We're welcomed by some cool little sheep and a horse. Oh, there's tiny baby sheep, like the size of Vanna. Uh -huh. Oh, how cute was that? Okay, looks like we made it. All right, so as long as this turns out to be the actual spot, it is confirmed that the Google proved us way, way wrong. It is 340. Ah. So the Google was only 15 minutes off. It actually did pretty good this trip. All right, so we've just pulled up to our camp. It's pretty amazing. But first things first, Kurt has spotted a bird. I don't even know what kind because everything was so hectic. So let's see if we can get him with the big camera. All right, it's a toucan. Kurt is walking far enough away to get in because he's literally right over our van. Now let me show you something else about where we're parked. This is a pretty amazing campsite. We are parked by the Rio Claro. Now they take rafting trips down the Rio Claro and this is a point where they get out. So here comes a group of rafters right now just finished their day on the river. But look at this thing. Oh wow, this is a beautiful place. Let's go see Kurt. So we just got here and there's two cat two cans here I believe this is called a keel bill you can see he's got they got a chestnut brown uh, spot but I also hear there might be some babies here so we're gonna be on the lookout for that and also some guacamayas which you guys probably know better as macaws so I don't know we literally just got here and started immediately running around also one last thing it is hot here it's got to be <laughs> at least 90 degrees but fortunately, we're parked up right here next to this river, so check this out. One thing is for sure, I have to take it slow and steady on the uneven ground through the fields and now coming down this rock path. It's nothing dangerous, but I can tell you guys, it's different than walking on a sidewalk. I think it's actually really good for me. Working my balance muscles. And look what I'm walking to. Beautiful river. I 
lady that runs the little concession stand in the campground here said there are baby toucans right over here. She has her daughter showing Kurt the way. Now they're going fast. <laughs> All right. Looks like the daughter's going to show us where they are. Babies. Kurt, I'm not getting too far from the van with all these people here. All right, Kurt's going scouting. This place is a little hidden gem. We thought we had just found a place to crash for the night. I've never been not so much. They have spotted the a baby toucan. Hopefully Kurt's getting it. Up in the tree. I think it's a baby guacamaya. <laughs> He's got a white face like a guacamaya. It's bird egg. Muchos en mañana, que hora? Good morning, everyone. We had a good night last night. We probably already told you, but it was so exciting when we got here. There was so much activity with all the birds, and it was 100% unexpected. Now, Stowe researched this place on iOverlander, and there was tons of reviews, so we knew it was a good spot down by the river. Let me show you that. So the van's right here. And the river is right here, and you can see it's a really clean, pretty river. And the water is nice and cool. I got in. It felt a little cold, but only because it was pretty hot outside yesterday. Uh, there's a little uh, covered canopy area here and a place that has drinks and snacks here. But as I said last night, we got here. There were so many birds. We were just running around. And so if you can see this tree right here oh there's bats in this little i don't know if they make food there or not but they definitely have sodas and sandwich or sodas and chips but in any event you can see the aura pendula's nest now i didn't get any shots of the aura pendula's last night they kind of move around i've seen them this morning flying to the nest it's just been too foggy to film see the fog's just starting to burn off so we're getting the cameras out right now. Hopefully we can get some more shots. But in this big tall tree right here in front of us, that's where the baby toucan was. And so we spent a lot of time there. There's a lot of, I think they're green macaws. We're not sure. They're definitely smaller than the ones we saw in Costa Rica. Almost like a parrot. But in any event, this is kind of a big farm area out here. There goes Aura Pendula flying right now. I don't know if I can get him. But in any event, there's a couple glamping sites, cabanas or whatever over there. But it's kind of just farmland with the chickens and the goats out here. And then a lot of the rafting tours pull their rafts out of the water right here, which is the reason for this little facility. Oh, there's some Aura Pendulas up there. I gotta go grab the camera. Here's another tree with a bunch of the nests and one is out. So I definitely want to get them before the sun gets up too high and they all go back to sleep. So let's run back to the van. Woo. But anyway, as we told you before, we're on our way. <sighs> yeah, the Aura Pendulas are out. I just saw another one going to the nest. 
So we're on our way to Ecuador. We have a few stops along the way. We only have a couple more weeks left on our passport. And the only big problem is the ELN rebels are reportedly going to be causing a stir today, tomorrow, and the next day. We don't know what. And so, anyway, it's going to be kind of a little tricky deal. We got a long drive today to get to our next spot, which is fortunately a hostel, maybe a little bit more secure. We did not have internet here, so it's tough to research what's going on. We're gonna to try to get some more bird shots and we're gonna get out of here, guys. But this would be a place, this would be a place we would definitely spend two or three days and two or three nights at if we weren't under the time constraints we are. But there are several things left that we wanna do in Colombia, that we're pumped to do in Colombia. So, in any event, let's go get the camera gear. Hopefully I can get an aura pendula for you. So you guys can see those things. They're loud, beautiful birds with the cool nest. Check out this river. What a beautiful morning. We are headed out. It's tough to leave this place, but as we said, we have other place to be and there's also sort of the risk of what's going on. But that's not the big news. The big news is Look who's driving. I'm not driving long, guys. This is a nice, safe place for me to see what it feels like on my knee. But as soon as we get to where it's the break is very important, Kurt will take back over. This is a practice run. She's trying to avoid the worst position in van life, the passenger. <laughs> <laughs> the one who has to put up with the other ones driving. Anyway, I hope she does well. We'll see you guys. All right, the first big test, a bumpy hill. Up the hill. How's the, the hill. toe feeling? It's okay. It's, it's doing all right. I downshifted, so it's not a difficult thing. So I think we're doing okay. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.